Um, yeah, so as Matthew said, I'm going to take you through what CPE um, has been doing for about the last six months. Um, so we have put together a slideshow today that is uh, based on the airplane movie, if anybody's seen that. Um, so that's our theme today as holiday season is kind of upon us and everybody's taking flights hopefully um, soon. So yeah, we just thought it would be a really fun way to kind of give you guys some updates and tell you what the teams have been up to. Um, so as you can see here, our sections are themed for your convenience. Um, please note your nearest fire exit is a leave button should you wish to do so. Um, and please feel free to use the Q&A section as we go through the presentation and hopefully some of our stewards in uh, the Q&A section there could maybe answer some of those questions as we're going through. But we will have some time for questions at the end as well if um, anyone has any. And um, yeah, we really hope you enjoy the presentation. Um, so first things first, we're gonna go through arrivals. So this is kind of what we've been working on um, in the last kind of couple of quarters um, and go through some of those projects. So the first of those projects is Image Builder. So that was worked on by Stephen Cody, David Kerwin and James Richardson. Um, so this team assisted Fedora IoT and Image Builder team with integrating the Image Builder service into Fedora IoT build pipeline. Um, it's in the staging process right now, but because F36 is now out of freeze and um, the freeze is over, um, we are ready to roll that out into production soon. So uh, watch this space for that to come out. Um, the second project that we're going to look at is Bodhi. So Bodhi was worked on in Q1 of this year, which was January, February and March. Uh, we've managed to make some very good changes to the Bodhi service, including sp splitting it into three packages. Uh, we've moved some CI tests to GitHub Actions, which means there's a more reliable uh, testing system. Um, we've added some more automation and we've resolved a lot of the dependency issues in the app such as adding uh, poetry. We've also upgraded Bodhi to use OIDC. Um, all of these improvements will be in the next release of Bodhi, which we're scheduling for about two weeks time, um, now that F36 has been released. And that was worked on by Aurelian, Lenka and Ryan and Patrick. And the third project we're gonna look at is um, Datanomer Data Grapper. Um, so the CPE team upgraded Data Nomer Data Grapper service late last year to make the experience better for our users. So both apps now use Fedora messaging service, which means people using Data Grapper to view results um, or events of apps can read what the results are from the Data Grapper homepage, whereas previously it was displayed as a JSON file blurb and it wasn't very pleasant. Um, so the big thing with this here though is that only apps that have the Fedora messaging schemas can be displayed as humanly readable through Data Grapper. So we strongly recommend app maintainers write and add a Fedora messaging schema to their apps. Uh, we even have a how-to and a cookie cutter template of the schema. So this makes it easier for you guys to do. Um, it will become necessary in the months to come as we are turning our attention to revamping FMN. And I'm gonna come back to that later in the presentation. Um, okay. So we're gonna to go to what's in flight at the moment. So some of the projects that we're currently working on. Um, this first one is Flask OIDC. And it's currently being worked on by David Curran, uh, Vipul and James. Um, so this project is seeing our team tackle some of the tech deck that has accumulated in our tech stack. And uh, we're in the process of integrating the authlib library to Flask OIDC as the library it was using, which was auth to client is depreciated and no longer maintain, uh, maintained. Uh, this version of authlib that we will be using is authlib 1.0. And the next project that we're working on is automate packaging for infra apps. Uh, so we've undertaken this work this quarter um, as not all infra apps are available as RPM packages in Fedora. And we believe that having an automated process for doing this work would make a light, would make life a lot easier for developers and packagers. Um, and that's currently being worked on by Stephen, Akashdeep and Lenka. Um, 
and then just to highlight some of the work that's being done by Infra and Relenge at the moment, so they keep everything going and keep the show on the road. Um, so folks over in Infra and Relenge um, have gotten through a lot of work since the release of F35. Um, they've completed a migration of Fedora docs, so all of our documentation should now live in docs.fedoraproject.org for our convenience. Um, they also move some of the machinery around um, namely adding some extra machines for our open shift four cluster and open QA and have moved Ansible control host to Ansible core, which is making running playbooks way more efficient. Um, as always, our release engineers on CPE assist in the mass rebuild and release of Fedora as well. And then we're gonna go to departures. So this is some of the a look at what's coming up next for CPE over the coming months. Um, so the team is aiming to start work on a new FMN service in around July or August of this year. FMN stands for Fedora, Fedora Messaging Notifications and is used throughout the projects by users as a way to receive notifications on their activity in a project. Um, they get results from bills, uh, results from tests or any activity that may be of interest to them. Um, it's currently using Fedora Message and we are trying to move it away from this service to a more up-to-date version, which is using Fedora Messaging. Uh, we intend to tailor FMN to interact with Fedora Messaging only in the coming months in an effort to reduce long lag times that users are currently experiencing and also improve our UI as well. So our findings and recommendations are published in the fedoraarc.readthedocs.io and an email has gone out to the various lists um, of what we are intending to do with it. And a huge thank you to everyone who's engaged with our team um, when we were trying to understand the needs of the Fedora community. And we hope that the solution that has been designed will make FMN an experience that's much better for everyone. And don't forget to use your schemas as well. Um, so we've called this section air traffic control. Uh, so we wanted to give you a quick insight into how a project goes from an idea that someone has submitted and uh, goes into our repo and then actually becomes actioned into a project and a team is put in place uh, for that. Um, so we've called it air traffic control because that's kind of similar to how the process is. So someone is put in place to direct the work um, so that there's no crashes. So first things first with this, um, if you have a project idea for the CPE team, you need to file a ticket in the initiative repository outlining what your idea is about. Then the team product owner reads through it, tags it as to be scoped, and then begins an initiative acceptance criteria, which is um, basically asking the following questions. So does this meet the, the team's mission statement? What value is the work to our end users? And can the work be delivered technically by our team? And if yes is the answer to all of those questions, then the product owner updates the ticket with an output of accepted. And if it's no to any of those questions, uh, the ticket will be closed and given a reason and then the requester is notified of that reason. Um, so once the project has been accepted, uh, the next stage is to get the work scoped for delivery and insights are gathered from different perspectives. So this is done by first assigning an ARC team to the project. The ARC team is tasked with identifying different ways of how a project could be delivered. Then they produce an outcome in the form of a technical approach recommendation, or for short, we call it TAOR that can be applied to a project. And this pushes the outcome to readthedocs.com. And the outcome is also reviewed with the wider team and the requester. Um, and when all extra information is gathered, the product owner creates a brief on the work the development team um, will consume when it's ready to work on it. Um, so an example of what we put into a project brief can be like an init initial requirement for the development of the project, the value proposition, uh, potential risks and impacted impacts that the team may have, 
um, hardware requirements, skill sets needed, um, team sizing, and a delivery time frame as well. And then finally, once it's all been scoped and there's a TA or it is uh, added to the backlog and in a ready state, um, it's then staffed by the CPE team when we have a free development team cycle and an email goes out to the team and our stakeholders and a blog post comes out from our community comms team, team outlining what our team's plans are for the, that quarter. And we're at our passenger service desk. So if there are questions, I will just go back to the Q&A section if I can. So if anybody has any questions, please feel free to add them in there. Hopefully we can get we them answered for you. We basically just got um, airplane jokes there from Ben. Uh, <laughs> Uh, could you explain a little bit about each of the um, different infrastructure projects, like the, the what Bodhi is and those things? I think some of the people um, in our audience are kind of newer to yeah. the Fedora infrastructure or coming as Fedora users mm -hmm. and might not kind of know the ins and outs. I think that would be helpful. And I'm going to drop back off the screen after yeah. that. No worries. Let me just try and go back in presentation slides to... Um, Just kidding. Sorry, so I think the last question, if there wasn't a question in the meantime, is about the Bodhi service. Um, so Bodhi is an app, it manages updates in Fedora. Um, it's heavily used within the Infra and Relenge team. Um, and then the updates have um, been to make it uh, more simple to use and have a lot more testing coverage. Um, so I hope that answers that question. If there's any more questions from anyone, let me see. Uh, yeah. So, oh, um, Fedora messaging service. What's? Um. Yeah. So Fedora messaging service is literally how like. Uh, communication comes in through some of the Fedora apps and um, notifications and um, yeah it yeah communication I in should, general. But, uh, to, uh, it is for notifications from applications specifically right it's not like a it's not related to chat or anything like that for messaging it's just the updates right yep. and the existing system is very complicated and kind of overwhelming. So there's some work on making it so that no actual human beings can use it, I think. That's the word. Um, if there's no more questions, I guess, um, thank you very much for this presentation. I, it was great. Um, the slide, lots, lots of information packed in there and the slides are really very fun. So that's, uh, appreciate it. And, Thank much. you for all your work um, on this. Yeah, sorry, sorry, it it, it kind of yeah. blocked out That's in the middle not, there. But, it's the platform, not <laughs> you. you. Uh, and <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you to Eva Maloney. She helped me a lot with the Can email me? stuff. So, Can. there's one yes, more question sorry. in the Q and A. Oh, oh sorry. Um, oh yeah, username change and login is most requested issue. Any works going on? Um, I'm not sure at the moment, um, but I can figure that out and hopefully get that back to you. Um, I'm not sure if Aoife is listening, but. Aoife, feel free to hop on here if you know the answer. Oh. Yep, oh. Bipple has answered and said um, no work around it at it, the moment. It's really difficult moment. because it is deeply ingrained into all of Fedora services that um, your username string is your identity. In retrospect, the thing where you give a little random hash or a um, number to be the actual underlying identity and the username is descriptive would have been better, but it was, you know, a lot of these things are two decades old. So it's a very big undertaking to do it in a way that maps old things to new things in a way that doesn't break everything. Um, so 
uh, it's going to be a big project. I think it's something we will want to do at some point, but it's really hard to make it get to the top of priorities. Um, at, for now, the thing that can be done is um, you know, file a ticket from your old account saying I'm you know, abandoning this account or and um, start a new account. Um, I know that's not ideal, but that's what we've got at this point. Um, yeah, exactly. Second, what Matthew said, um, file a ticket in the Fedora Infra Tracker. It's on Pagier. I'll dig out the link somewhere. Um, but yeah, our Infra and Releng team are handling all of the all of the ad hoc things like that for for Noggin and stuff. And if you think that it needs a big feature overhaul, um, I dropped in the repo link to our initiatives. If you think it's big enough, feel free to to create a, an issue. I'm happy to take a look at it and see then if we need to schedule a more formal project around the work. Do we have more questions showing up here? Um, is the CPE team looking into fixing up badges for the new uh, account system? Matthew, account did you put that in? <laughs> I did not. It's anonymous, though, so um, you'll never know. But it, uh, yeah, I could have put that in as well. Uh, we are definitely starting to explore it. I would expect an email out from Ryan Lurch in the coming weeks. Um, I know he's already been doing his own investigations into the back end on it as well. And yeah, similar, we're going to probably run it similar to how we have scoped FMN that's coming up. So you'll remember that both Ryan Lurch and Aurelian Bonparth has reached out to the list in the last couple of weeks. I think Ryan posted stuff on discussions that Fedora project and Aurelian hit up the info lists basically asking what the Fedora users would like to see happen in, with an FMN and how they currently use it and what they feel is important. We're going to take the same approach for badges. Um, and at the moment, Ryan is looking into how it's currently operating. And then we'll start with a very generic open ended. What do you want from badges? How do you currently use it? What do you see the values of it? Those three or four very open generic questions just so we can get a feel for how people are interacting with the service and what they would like out of it. So short answer, yes. So uh, Joseph asks if this team is related to the websites and the websites and apps revamp. Um, I'm going to answer that one real fast, which is um, sort of. So CP, uh, Red Hat employs a bunch of people to work on CPE, but CPE is not itself a Fedora team. It is a Red Hat team. So there are Fedora teams, uh, Fedora infrastructure, release engineering, websites, and uh, people at Red Hat and in CPE work on those teams in various ways as part of Fedora project, um, along with people you know who don't work at Red Hat. Um, those the, the Fedora teams are not. You know, exclusive to Red Hat, or you can be part of Fedora infrastructure or websites and apps um, without being a, a Red Hatter. Um, but a lot of people at CPE are on those teams either as part of their job or um, not as part of their job um, for fun or for their kind of 20% uh, extra side side project time. I think that's, did I get that all right? Is that... Yeah, we're like cousins. <laughs> huh, OK. Um, see um someone asked if there's a video with an introduction to all of the fedora infrastructure i am not aware of one but that would be a great video i think we could um, do with a lot more video content um, it's something we haven't really done very much of in the past decade and i think it's probably time for that to change um, video production is hard and i don't think we have a lot of people in fedora engineering roles who have a lot of skills in that so this is a really great way that somebody could help contribute to the project by the way um, so if you're interested and know about video stuff um, talk to me or somebody else and we'll see if we can get that going sorry i'm taking over your questions um, no, that's perfect. Thank you, Matthew. Aoife, is that, are there ponies where you are? No, no, this is my back garden. It's pony free. Um, I've already dealt with the ponies this morning. I, I, I was hoping I would get to see a pony here, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Remind me for the next one, the next, uh, the next release party, I'll do it down in the yard and for trade off for the internet that you're going to have, you can all see the ponies. <laughs> it seems like a good trade. 
just to and i know i said in chat and ellen referenced it during this presentation but it is extremely important if you're an app maintainer that you do take advantage of the cookie cutter template that we have for the fedora messaging schemas the new fmn service will only be listening to fedora messaging uh, notifications so if you are still if your app is still using fed message by the time we roll out the new changes to fmn your app won't be listened to so there is a GitHub repository. I will dig out the link before I drop off here. And um, there's a how-to and a cookie cutter template. We've tried to make this as straightforward as possible for app maintainers, but our team is always on hand as well. We usually hang out in hashtag Fedora apps channel a lot. And um, also we have the Fedora infra tracker as well. If you need to open a ticket to get some assistance, you do have a couple of months. We'll be starting the FMM project in the next maybe eight weeks certainly before the summer and we'll give plenty of advance notice before we ro roll out any backwards incompatible or, or drastic changes but get your cookie cutters while they're hot it's uh going you you'll be thanking us by the time it's finished and i'll dig out that repo link now for you So the Fedora message bus is a very cool thing for people who aren't aware. Um, it's fairly technical, but all of our infrastructure services um, and a bunch of other things are connected into basically a constant stream of activity, like a secret back behind the scenes Twitter for the applications themselves talking about what they're doing and other applications can listen to those messages and react to them. And so it ties everything together in a really neat way and also gives us a pretty interesting trove of data about you know project activity over the years. It's yeah. Um, I think I think Pingu was one of the initial people. Pingu, probably Ralph Bean. I'm not sure who all actually started. It's been running for almost a decade in some form or another. So uh, it's kind of ahead of its time. I know um, that structure for projects and uh, for it is more and more common. Um, but it was pretty innovative, and it, we still make a lot of really heavy use of it. And with that, I think we're at time here. Um, and I think, uh, thank you, uh, Ellen and Aoife. Um, Aoife, thank you for letting me put you on the spot. Um, and thank you to everybody at CPE. <laughs>